Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. We are here in studios. It is Friday. It is week six of the football season already. So we're going to talk some sports with Val. Uh, Val, I got to start off first off. I know you didn't have this on mm -hmm. your schedule, but I got to wish my uh, youngest daughter, McKenna, a happy 18th birthday. Be a little remiss if I didn't uh, lead the show off with that. Uh, Happy 18th birthday, McKenna. Happy 18th birthday to our favorite camera person. Yeah. Who, yeah. yeah she's done a little bit of everything camera-wise. She's yeah. done some football. She's done some baseball last mm -hmm. fall. So, yeah, does a good job with that. Does an okay job on the basketball court, too. So we're we're glad to have her. And it's just kind of a hard thing to imagine that we don't have any minor children anymore. All of our children are <laughs> over 18 now. So that's crazy to think about. <laughs> so... Happy birthday, McKenna, and uh, be seeing you here soon. I'm going to sneak up and uh, watch her cheer for the first time this year. She's going to be with the Panthers up at uh, South Central, so she doesn't know that yet. So going to be up there and get a chance to go watch her. I've got Nathan Nichols going to be running the production for us down here at uh, Barnhart for the uh, Zebras and the uh, Tigers. So I've been working with him for a couple weeks, got him ready to go. So looking forward to it. So then how are you, Val? Well, it looks like it's going to be one helene of a Friday night. I was wondering where you're going with that there for a second. All right. Uh, looks like the tail end of Helene is going to might stick its nose into some of our football games tonight. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have a wind advisory. It might only be might not be a ton of rain, only maybe a drizzle. Yeah. But there is going to be a wind advisory, so it's going to be interesting to see if team how this affects the games. Will teams be able to pass the ball or not? Yeah. For some teams like Rochester, I don't think it's – I've always said Rochester's offense is weatherproof. Right, right. It, it can be rain, snow, sleet, sun. Yeah. 90 degrees outside. They'll, that's not going to affect Coach Schaefer's play calling or how they run their offense. But it might affect some teams, some other teams in our area. Yeah, I, I could think of one game that it might affect with uh, two undefeated TRC teams. Yeah. You know, that McConaughey Northwestern game. That could be interesting to see how that affects that. But uh, Right, both, both teams known for their passing. Yeah. So, well, I definitely affected our broadcast. We've already been over there. We're cutting one camera out, so we're only going to use one camera tonight, and I've got that thing strapped down really good, so <laughs> hopefully it doesn't get blown away. But, uh, yeah, so it should be interesting. Mm -hmm. Um We'll get into that here in a minute. we got a lot of stuff to talk about, of course. Uh, Bryn Barrett, great volleyball player from uh, Culver Community, yeah. has uh, announced her uh, intentions for college. Yeah, she's going to play volleyball at IU Kokomo, a really good program there, and uh, really happy for Bryn. I, again, she's just had a spectacular year and having an especially great year for this year's Culver team, yeah. who is uh, right in the mix of the uh, Hoosier North race. Looks like they're going to fall short it looks like compared to pioneer but they've been red hot of late they've already won uh the triton invite and the tri-central invite so yeah. had a great she's had a great year and you know somebody who's just somebody you respect the moment you watch her play because she can do everything in a volleyball court yeah and i'm sure that's something that appeals to college coaches sure does whether it's yeah. serving setting hitting digging everything yeah. and that's going to get you playing time too because if you're versatile you know you can get yeah. out on the floor more so that'll help her out there and uh, Queen Chesney continues to impress. She's in about two weeks into her college career, but uh, she is uh, just really uh, running her, you know, what off. Yeah, Chesney's been Chesney Miller's been named at, at Manchester University freshman. She's been named Athlete of the Week twice uh, yeah. already in two races. Yeah. So clearly, adapting to the six k distance has been no problem for her. Right. Um, we want to mention the unified flag football draw was this past Monday. And Tippecanoe New Valley drew Carroll of Fort Wayne. They will play at that's the that's at the Warsaw sectional, and they'll be coming up on Saturday, October fifth. Okay. The, it's a seven-team sectional. The entire sectional will be played on October fifth. Yeah. So if Valley wins, they'll play, I believe, New Haven in the semifinals, and then uh, the championship afterwards. Yeah. In Valley, with a very good history in unified flag football, they have won three sectional titles <laughs> in their history. Remember, this is only the seventh year of the Unified Flag Football Tournament. Mm -hmm. I think only like five schools have won more than three sectionals. Yeah. And remember, the first uh, tournament was back in 2018, and Valley was the state runner-up that year. So. Yeah. Uh, got to got to give a shout out to our good friend Drew Thompson, who uh, was the voice of Valley for a long time for us, who was on that team that played, and now is uh, part of the coaching staff. He's part of the coaching staff. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, you know, we talk about multi-sport athletes all the time. Tristan Ragon is playing tennis, and he's also playing on the unified flag football team in Valley. Okay. Uh, the soccer draws are coming up on Sunday at 7 p.m. We don't know if the girls are going first or the boys are going first, but both of them will be coming up on Saturday ni- uh, Sunday night, 7 p.m. Okay. So we'll, uh, again, uh, obviously a lot of interest in with uh, Rochester in this new boys 2A sectional. Uh, the 1A sectional is pretty similar, though I think with the addition of man, you know, obviously a lot of talk about no more Bremen, no more Trinity Greenlawn, but I think with the Manchester girls, they're going to have something to say about that as well. Obviously, you know, Argus, uh, with their wins over uh, Culver and Lavelle earlier this year, looking pretty good, and we'll, t- we'll talk about that more um, as we go through this program. The boys' tennis draw is coming up on Monday night at 7 p.m., and again, Rochester... Uh, you know, in that five-team all-TRC sectional, and then Valley heading to Warsaw. And then uh, the we need to mention the Mississippi football team. Not only are they 5-0, and but they haven't allowed a point yet this season. Hmm. And we've been keeping an eye on the, the CIC this year a little bit more closely, only because there are four teams in the CIC that are in Rochester sectional. When you talk about... Uh, Eastbrook, Alexandria, Elwood, and Blackford. So yeah, we, we've been noticing that they're five and zero. They have not allowed a point yet this year, and their next two games are against Elwood and Blackford. Mm-hmm. They might be. They might have seven straight shots. <laughs> yeah. When, when Eastbrook, when they fa- when they face off against Eastbrook in week eight, they are that they have been that dominant. And guess who is in East Mississippi's three A sectional? Fort Wayne Lures, hmm. the defending two A state champion. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of season they have moving forward. Yeah. But last but not least, we need to talk about the Lady Zebras and the girls' golf team at Rochester. Yeah. Sexual champions for the first time in 11 years and for just the second time in school history. Well, not only that, but wow, what a performance by uh, both Olivia and Ava, mm-hmm. you know, both coming in even par. I mean, wow. Yeah, <laughs> a spectacular performance by both. You know, I was... I was there at Typical New Country Club, and I was kind of following both. I would, I would watch one, and then I would go up and watch the other. And you know, the parents were kind of, oh, I heard Ava's having a really good round. Oh, I heard Olivia's having a really good round. As it turned <laughs> out, they were right, but yeah. we, did, we didn't know how they were doing in comparison. And you know, it's always it's competitive golf, so you don't know how they're doing in comparison to themselves and everybody else. Uh, as it turned out, they beat the those two beat the entire field by ten strokes. Each shot seventy two. The third best score was eighty two. Wow. And and not only that, the team won the sectional by how many strokes? By twenty nine strokes. Yeah, Jeez. they shot three twenty seven. Rensselaer shot three fifty six, and Logansport shot three sixty one. So they both also advanced. But Rochester won by twenty nine strokes. That had to have been one of the larger margins in the state. You know, we were talking a lot about that uh, Logansport Rochester rivalry that's been pretty mm-hmm. tight this year. They won. Rochester won at home in an, in the uh, regular season meeting by four strokes, but it ended up being a, a basically a blowout, and, and Logan Sport just barely got through because they ended up finishing third. And only beat Kankakee Valley by three strokes. Yeah. So, yeah. So Rochester not only made it through, they win the championship, and they win it in dominant yeah. fashion. Yeah. So – Going forward, uh, yeah, and we, what are the what's the ceiling for this team? Yeah, we're yeah. I mean, you you look at you look at the fifteen teams that are be competing. And by the way, congratulations to Olivia on winning sectional medalist and beating yeah. Ava in a playoff. <laughs> yeah, the two. I, I don't. To be honest, I don't think if you would have told them they could have just shared it, they didn't have to play it off. I think they would have been fine with that. Yeah. But unfortunately, yeah. I think the rules forced them to play it off. Yeah. Uh, but again, there there wasn't a lot on the there wasn't too much on the line. I I don't you know with that. Obviously, we had that situation two years ago where they they almost had to play it off against each other for one spot at the state finals. Right. That almost happened. But anyway, yeah, so it, th- that was great to see, and especially when you see all the girls from the other teams who were there to watch the two Rochester kids play it off. It, mm-hmm. that's, that's a sign of respect, I really think. I know the girls from Pioneer <laughs> wanted to watch. The girls yeah. from uh, Logansport were all wanting, wanting to watch. So yeah. there's definitely a, you know, kind of one that's one of the sports where there's a real bond. But yeah, moving ahead to the regional, it's going to be at um, Sandy Pines in Demott. Uh, Rochester played there earlier this year, finished uh, second, uh, and shot under 340 there. That's when you knew it was going to be kind of a special season. They were fourth at last year's um, regional. 
losing out on Ch- losing out to Chesterton by only one stroke for the final team spot, and I'm sure that's something that they remember very well. Um, again, if you just talk about raw score, Rochester's 327 was the best of the 15 teams that will be playing in the regional. Hmm. Now, again, that's we're talking about over five golf courses, so I don't know how, yeah, how much you want to look yeah. into that. But it is worth noting that their 327 was the best score of the five. Um, the teams that we're going to be keeping in that, and now Rochester will be uh, paired with girls from Laporte, and they'll be teeing off on the back nine, and they'll start off at about 11.10 a.m. Eastern time tomorrow. That's 10.10 yeah. 10 a.m. DeMott time. Okay. So it's, they'll be in twosomes. So, I I mean, I, I like the idea of that. I mean, the, the round should move along pretty quickly. Okay. Uh, if you're in just twosomes, we, you know, we, I still remember the TRC a couple weeks ago when we, they were in foursomes. Mm-hmm. Uh, but and that was a really long day. Mm-hmm. Uh, teams we're going to be keeping an eye on, as well as Rochester, include Penn, South Bend St. Joe. South Bend St. Joe won the Penn sectional. Penn was second. South Bend St. Joe shot 350, and Penn shot 352. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to be keeping an eye on Chesterton, who, of course, beat State last year, and they were th- um, they won their sectional. And uh, Lake Central is another team we're going to be keeping an eye. Lake Central has been a team that's been ranked. In the top 20 most of the year, there's school with 3,000 students, but Rochester beat Lake Central at the uh, Kankakee Valley Invite at Sandy Pines earlier this year, and I think Rochester also beat them at the Kokomo tournament. So mm-hmm. it's a good Lake Central team, but Rochester has beaten them twice. But they're, yeah. they're certainly a team you can't uh, just assume you're going to beat them again. They're going to, you know, they're they're a very solid team. So, um, you know, I, I think there there's definitely an excitement here, especially after what. You know what they did la- at last year's regional when they came so close, but also that Olivia Bailey's the defending regional champion. She's played this course before and played it really well. Mm-hmm. Ava Thomas got out as an individual last year. Yeah, uh, we should mention Molly Moore shot 85 at the sectional. That was, I think that was tied for fifth among all individuals. Yeah, uh, Lexi Haw shot 98 and Lainey Magona shot 102. I think there's definitely an, a, a hope that that Lexi can lower her score. You know, there's a there's a great history of uh, you know really good golf programs uh, in Rochester over the years. And ha- have the girls ever made a team state? They have. Have they? they? Did twice okay. in a row in 2012 and 2013. Okay. Yeah. Of course, one of the stars of that 2012 team was Caitlin Faust, whose brother Austin is the football coach at Culver. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I believe Lauren Doherty was on. She was she was Lauren Doherty back then. She's now a prominent attorney in town. Yeah, yeah, Lauren Adley. Lauren Adley, mm-hmm. yeah. Yep. So that was she, they were on the 2012 team, and then on the 2013 team, they kept Karsten and Covenant Lingenfelter from the year before, and then they added a third sister in Kinley. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so yeah. it was the th- those three, and then Lindsey Mitchell and Vanessa Henning. Okay. So yeah, I was there for I was there for both of those teams advancing to state. So this would be, uh, so they're trying to advance to state for the third time in school history. Is it? They re they redid the um, how you get to state and, and the number of teams. Is it easier or harder? I can't remember to get there now than it was. Did, did they make it? It's a little more. It's a little more difficult now. Yeah, yeah. That was back in the days when eighteen team eighteen teams made state. Then they went from eighteen to twelve. Now they've gone back from twelve to fifteen. Okay. But so technically, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So good luck, and uh, also be a little remiss if we didn't mention Mia McKeg from Pioneer. Yeah, Mia shot 86, advanced as an individual. Uh, the three ad- advancing scores were 86, 86, 89, I think. And, you know, talking with Mia after the round, she said she was sick most of the round. She said she almost she said she almost puked on, after, after the front nine. She said hmm. she just wasn't feeling very well. She said she had shot a practice round at Tippecanoe Country Club the day before and shot 76. Hmm. So the fact that she made it through shows you how tough she is. And I think she's expecting a really good score uh, at Sandy Pines tomorrow. Yeah. All right. Good luck to all the golfers uh, taking the uh, tee boxes tomorrow at Sandy Pines, and we'll be keeping an eye on it. And uh, I'm sure you'll be there for that. I will be there for all that. Right. All right. Good luck, everybody. We'll take a quick break here, come back, and we'll talk some more sports with Val. Now more than ever, your business needs fast and reliable Internet. Whether you're hosting a meeting, printing invoices, or keeping inventory, your business deserves the best internet speeds to keep everything running smoothly. And to get the best speeds, you need a fiber connection. Here at RTC, we have the solution for you. 
Contact me, Steve Stricker, to see how we can best serve you, or you can also visit us online at rtc1.com. At Webb's Family Pharmacy, we strive to provide our community with a better alternative. We respect the many choices our patients have when it comes to health care needs. When they choose us, we go above and beyond to offer them personalized service and care that will consistently remind them of why we are a superior choice to other pharmacies. Pharmacy care should be proactive when possible, it should be customized to patient needs, it should strive for better health outcomes, it should help manage costs. At Webb's Family Pharmacy, our mission is to provide the pharmacy care you deserve. Say hello to a whole new world of growing possibilities with Nutrien Ag Solutions. Let the experts at Nutrien Ag Solutions help you realize the highest crop yield with the most sustainable solutions possible. Stop by their local location just east of Fulton or call at 574-857-3555 or visit online at www.nutrienagsolutions.com to see how Nutrien can help you. Community State Bank has maintained a tradition of service since opening our doors in May of 1930. For the past 90 years, we've been dedicated to developing personal relationships in all the communities we serve. Offering both personal and business accounts, Community State Bank is your local friend and neighbor. Stop by any of our local offices to set up your accounts today, online at csbnetbank.com. Welcome back here talking sports with Val as we get ready for week six of the football season. The uh, Rochester Zebras were able to keep their sheet clean, as you would say, for the uh, TRC going uh, to Lewis Cass last Friday night and uh, taking on the Kings. And boy, it was uh, it was all the Zebras wanted there in the first half, Val. Yeah, it was an interesting game because Lewis Cass was really well prepared on defense for this game. Mm -hmm. They took some things away from the Zebras that they usually do really well. The belly play, the trap play, and that belly sweep that Rochester likes to run. We call it the, I know Randy Randy Wynn and I, we call it the second man through play, but it, technically it's called the belly sweep. Okay. Lewis Cash shut down all three of those plays. So Rochester went with the give the ball to Brant Beck play. <laughs> that one seemed to be working. That was the, <laughs> yeah. It kind of has that tendency to happen, uh -huh. right? And they went with this play that's called the Trojan Sweep. That's what the Zebras call it. And basically the key, the key to the, that play is uh, that kick-out block from the fullback. And it was funny. Uh, Ron Schaefer said that Kale Schatz thought he was probably more of a guard than he was a fullback. He had to get, make that kick-out play. This was, a, this was a big play early in the game as Rochester had to convert a fourth down. Trenton Meadows just barely getting it mm. with a second effort. I, I continue to be impressed by Meadows. I mean, yeah. he just – he runs hard. He's not that big of a kid, mm -hmm. but he just – he runs with, uh, you know, reckless abandon. I think it's that number seven. It just yeah makes you run like that. And I think Trent's just a sophomore. Yeah. That is uh, Fry with the uh, touchdown run for Lewis Cass, basically untouched on a little counter. And Lewis Cass led uh, seven to six at the end of one quarter. I think that's the first time that the Zebras have trailed in the first half of a game all season long, correct? Yeah, yeah. Because they didn't lose the lead until the second half at Valley. The story of this game was turnovers. There was one by Lewis Cass in the first half, and there you saw it. It was a fumble. I think Brant Beck forced the fumble, and Drew Bauer, I know Drew Bowers recovered the fumble. Another huge play here on fourth yeah. down. A fake punt. I asked Coach Schaefer, he said, how often do you practice that? They said, every day. I asked Trenton Meadows, how often do you practice that every day? Does it work every time? He goes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Usually they're supposed to say no, right? Yeah. <laughs> it works every time. And then this play, nice little pass in the flat to Meadows for a touchdown from Carson Pollock. And Rochester takes a 12-7 lead. They would tack on a two-point conversion to go up 14-7. But late in the first half, Lewis Cass would get a drive going. And Lewis Cass saved up their timeouts, and they get the touchdown. I believe that was Smith. That that play looks familiar. Yeah. <laughs> it's, that's, that's the same uh, play you were talking about a moment ago, I believe. Yeah. Inside handoff. Yeah. Yeah, the inside handoff play, 14-all. Actually, this was, yeah, this was the only turnover Rochester had all night. I 
Hail Mary at the end of the half that Lewis Cass intercepted in the end zone. But again, those things can happen at the end of a half. This was maybe the biggest play of the game, the interception by Clarence Garrett, and he returns at 14 yards to the 45-yard line. I asked Clarence afterwards, I said, he said that was not his man. He said he just saw him get open and he had to get out of his area, and Rochester would follow with a 55-yard drive, touchdown run by Meadows. They would attack on a two-point conversion, and Rochester goes up 22-14. to 14. And then this was just looked like a drop pitch. Brant Beck recovers the fumble. Zebras take over inside the Lewis Cass 40. Great field position. You know, and Rochester was playing really well, but boy, Cass, you just cannot lose that many uh, balls and, and yeah. expect to win a game. I mean, they, what, four turnovers in the second half? Yeah. That was third and goal, and Brant Beck with a nice cutback run. Again, that Trojan sweep, he cut off the... The left tackle cut back inside. They would get the two-point conversion and take a 30-14 to 14 lead. Then uh, Rowe with a touchdown run for Lewis Cass. So with 34 seconds to go in the third quarter, that made it 30-20. They would attack on the two-point conversion to make 30-22. But the fourth quarter was all zebras. As you could see, Lewis Cass get a bit winded. That's a touchdown run by Brant Bagg. You see Brant, he, he scores the touchdown. He tries to get back up, and he goes back down. He was cramping up. Hmm. Two-point conversion was no good, 36-22. And this was the kickoff. This was a weird play. Yeah, and seemingly... The, the, I, I'm guessing this wasn't intended to be like an onside kickoff. No, it, it drops, and then the guy just falls down. And Zach Parks, what a recovery, right at the Lewis Cass 20-yard line. Yeah. It wasn't well, intended to be... Ball. An, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, don't think he, he, I don't think he ever touched it. But again, any, any kick over 10 yards, this a live ball. Mm-hmm. And finally, Rochester got the belly play that had been that had been really that Lewis Cass had denied them all night. They finally started to get it to run well. Shots up the middle for a touchdown. They would tag on the two point conversion to go 44-22. And then watch this play by Mason Heisey. Strip, force fumble, and then he recovers the fumble. Yeah. With his left hand. Yeah. He knocked it out of the guy's hand. That was turnover number four on the night for Lewis Cass, and Rochester would head back the other way. Shots, belly, up the middle, and he gets in for a score. The two-point conversion was no good, but Rochester took a 50-22 to lead. He scored, what, three touchdowns in a span of about, what, five minutes? Yeah. And it went from 30-22 to 50-22, and that was the final. Yeah, it's crazy how, how close that game was until, you know, right at the end of the third quarter, and mm -hmm. then... Rochester just uh, just took over, and of course, you know the the three turnovers there in the fourth quarter did not help at all for yeah. the uh, Kings either. So. Yeah. Um, but Brand Beck, a career high two hundred and thirty yards. That was one of the main stories, and just mm -hmm. the uh, the ability of the Zebras to to move the ball when Lewis Cass was taking away a lot of the Zebras' favorite plays. Yeah. So tonight you got a Peru team coming into Barnhart Field. Peru obviously gave the Zebras their only conference loss of the season last year but a completely different looking Peru team than it was last year, obviously with Rector and Ross graduating. Yeah. And now it sounds like right. their, their best running back is going to be also, out for right. tonight. Peru also graduated an all-state lineman, and Liam Lancaster, who was a great star for them. And now uh, and they had a, they had a big uh, tight end as well, right? They yeah, graduated a strong. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was a really good player. Yeah. They all graduate. Now Isaiah Corba, who's probably maybe their fastest player. Uh, he will not play tonight. He is suspended. He was ejected from the McConaughey game last week. So by rule, he is suspended for one game, so he, he will not be there tonight. Peru's coming off a 42 to nothing loss to McConaughey last week. So uh, they are 2-3 and three overall, and they're 2-2 two and two in the TRC. So, again, you'd have to like the Zebras' chances without Corba. Um, they're gonna really, Peru's really going to rely on Tanner Boggs without Corba in there. Boggs is more of a inside the tackles guy. He's going to stick his nose in there, and mm -hmm. they're, they're going to try to grind out four and five yards at a time and keep the zebra offense off the field. Yeah, um, Prude passes the ball less than five times a game. They have this Johan uh, Antunez, who is really more of a facilitator in the offense. He, he's he's more of a running threat than a passing threat mm -hmm. uh, behind, under center. But the question is, can this Prude defense step up? Because they really struggled against McConaughey last week. Um, McConaughey had about 350 yards of off, or 340 yards of offense last week, and that was with a backup quarterback. Mm -hmm. um, so, 
again, I, where, where, where are the Peru kids' heads at? You know, again, I guess if you ever want to play Peru, it's the week after the Maconaqua game because, you know, will they be focused? Um, but this is a Peru, t- and of course, this is a Peru team that on top of that won't have Corba. So yeah, uh, I'll be curious to see how, how they come out. Um, and I, I don't think there's going to be any lack of motivation on the Zebra side, obviously, with that loss to them last yeah, year down at Peru. Right, right. And so. how will the Zebras be able to, to again, execute their offense in what should be adverse weather circumstances right so that'll be coming up next here on rtc tv4 looking forward to that one is can the uh, zebras keep their conference mark perfect uh, of course you know the the big one we talked about obviously the uh, braves and the tigers going to be facing off both, both of those teams with four and oh marks so if rochester can uh, can get the win tonight one of them you know if it's mcconaughey obviously they'll meet at the end of the year if it's northwestern that that might be a, a two-way because they don't play uh, throughout the year, so it could be interesting there. So, yeah, and we, both McConaughey and Northwestern started backup quarterbacks last week. Yeah, and the backup quarterback for McConaughey, the Tar Nolan Tar T A R R H, he went ten for ten. Hmm. So apparently, they <laughs> it might be a decent backup quarterback. Yeah, yeah, he would appear to be a very good backup. We'll see what the weather does for that. Yeah, might uh, might play into that. Of course, both those teams like to throw the ball, so. Well, Val, um, the uh, the girls got it done last night against Northwestern, but it was uh, it was almost like one of those games you know they used to play where you'd have evens and odds, right? Yeah. And I, the uh, the zebras drew the odds, which you know actually worked in their favor because <laughs> you get three sets of odds and only two sets of evens. But boy, what a crazy crazy match! I mean, yeah, we've t- we've seen momentum swings in matches before, but never like one set to the next being completely opposite of what the, yeah. the previous one was. And to add a little bit of context to this, Rochester was coming off a loss to McConaughey on Tuesday night, which might have been the low point of the season. You know, they lost 25-14, 25-20, 25-16. So yeah. wh- where, where would they be at coming in facing a Northwestern team that was coming off a three-game, three-set sweep of Peru on Tuesday, and that's the same Peru team that beat Rochester. Yeah. So I wasn't sure on the highlight package on how to do this, but I just kind of went through because the the Zebras won set one, Northwestern mm-hmm. came back and won set two, Zebras win set three, Northwestern win set four. So uh, I thought, you know, let's let's just start on set five because it was kind of a, a synopsis of the entire mm-hmm. match, right? It yeah. just seemed like the whole match kind of was rounded off into this this fifth set, Northwestern. Gets off to a, a you know a smoking hot start again in, in mm-hmm. set number five. You think, oh no, you know here we go four four zero. Gosh, mm-hmm. you know th- th- that's a that's a problem. But all of a sudden, um, you know, and, and Coach Strasser she shook up the lineup a little bit last night, and I think it paid off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we saw a lot more of Maddie Balon, and. Uh, and how good was uh, was Braylon Hunter last night? Yeah, she was really, really good. And I think, um, again, they just seem to be much more comfortable running their offense. But, I mean, you can mm-hmm. you can see here now all of a sudden, uh, what did Rochester go on, a 9-1 run? Yeah. Uh, so it went, went from 5-1 to... Right, Dara Strasser had some spectacular serves here. Yeah, still fact, serving in fact, here. It was a, in fact, it was a 12-1 run. Yeah, yeah. It went from 4-0 down to 12-5 ahead. And you're asking why would I why would I show Dara serving one long because she's still serving. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, she served that long in the fifth set. Yeah. It's crazy. Eight straight points. They would stave off the first match point. But it would end on, I believe, a service error. Yep, into the net. And you talked about Hunter. Uh, Montel had a, Avery Montel had a bunch of big kills. Audrey Bollinger uh, was very clutch when they needed it from her. She had some excellent serving as well. And, you know, Aubrey Wilson, I mean, you just can't yeah. say enough about Aubrey. You, you look at these scores here, 25-13, 18-25, 25-11, 23-25, 15-7. I mean, just mm-hmm. what a wild and crazy match yeah. that was. 
Um, and the thing that I noticed about Rochester last night that I hadn't seen in the last four or five matches that we've done was their energy. Yeah. I mean, they, they brought the energy, and they brought it all five sets, even in at times you know when they were not doing yeah. well. They were still bringing energy. And that was a total 180 from the McConaughey match as well when they seemed really flat. Yeah. So that, 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 that was a really good sign. Uh, but uh, there was a lot of, I was told there was a lot of hooting and hollering in the locker room after the match. They were yeah. really pumped for, for themselves. And, yeah. Well, and and deservedly so. Yeah, good for them. Yeah. So, uh, still got a long way to go here, a couple weeks yet of the regular season. But uh, if they can put together, you know, a little bit of a streak here and, and yeah. get hot, I mean, obviously the sectional is just brutal as all get out. Right. But. And they go to the Warsaw Invite tomorrow. That tournament's always loaded. They're in a group of. Three, so they'll play Fairfield and Leo, mm -hmm. and their Fairfield is always good every year. You know, yeah. Leo will be tough playing it out of that NE8 conference, yeah. and then two more uh, place round matches after that. So they'll play yeah. four times at the Warsaw Invite, and Wabash comes here on Tuesday. They're a top 20 team in Class 2A. They're a conference and sectional rival, and then they host Winnemac on Thursday. Yeah. Yeah, Wabash probably going to be a little upset because they uh, let one slide last year over a Wabash. Yeah. So they're going to be upset. So you still got Wabash, and then they uh, end the season at Whitco as far as conference games goes. Yeah. So, you know, see if they can catch some momentum here and keep that momentum on their side a little bit. That yeah. Was, that was a great win for them last night, and it was a fun game to call. So uh, obviously I couldn't do all the highlights of the game. If you want to watch it, it's on rtc4.com, and uh, you can check that one out. And, it's a it's a good one, and and the JV won in in three sets. Mm -hmm. So that was a, a great comeback win for them as well. Yeah, we didn't get out last night until about nine thirty, nine forty five. We had a pretty uh, late night. Yeah, there. yeah, it was after. Uh, yeah, it was about ten thirty when I got home. So mm -hmm. it was a really late one. Normally, you know, mm -hmm. when you when you're getting done on two sets and three sets, it's a little quicker. So. Yeah. All right. Well, we need to take another quick break here. We'll come back and talk some more sports with Val here in just a moment. Stop on by to Inyards Hardware for all your home project needs. With a broad selection of garden supplies, tools, and paints featuring brands like Milwaukee, Diablo, and their newest paint line Valspar, you can be sure that Inyarts will supply you with the most top-rated equipment. And if you need something for a quick job, check out Inyarts Rental Selection to get you going. Stop on in at 1619 Main Street, Rochester, or call 574-223-4920 to see how Inyarts' friendly staff can help you. At First Federal Savings Bank, you can bank on the go. With the First Federal Savings Bank mobile app, you can check account balances, transfer money, view account history, deposit your checks, and pay your bills. If you want your mobile banking done easy, download the First Federal Savings Bank mobile app today. The app is available for both Apple and Android phones and tablets. Just type in First Federal Savings Bank in the search bar and look for the white star with the green background. Kriskin's Pools and Spas is your local contractor for all your pool and hot tub installation needs. With a wide selection to choose from, Kriskin's is sure to hook you up with exactly what you need no matter what your budget is. To learn more about our services, visit kriskinspoolsandspas.com, call 574-857-3100, or stop on by at 7448 Liberty Avenue in Fulton to see how Kriskin's can help you. Mike Anderson in Rochester is here to set you up with a new set of wheels. From coming on the lot to driving off in your new dream car, Mike Anderson strives to give you the smoothest dealership experience. Not only that, but Mike Anderson in Rochester is here to lend a hand with their service center to keep your ride running. Stop on in for a test drive or call today at 574-223-2711 to see how Mike Anderson in Rochester can steer you in the right direction. Welcome back here, talking sports with Val for a Friday afternoon, week six of the football season coming up here in just a few moments. Val, you uh, not only did uh, volleyball last night, but you also got a chance to go over to Blackadder and, and watch the uh, girls' soccer team uh, start off really well against Peru, but uh, unfortunately kind of ran out of steam there, didn't they? Yeah, they, they wound up, uh, you know, the week started with an 8-1 to loss to McConaughey on Saturday at Blackadder, then a 9-0 loss to Manchester but this Peru game was something I know that they had circled on their calendar because they had lost at Peru last year, and that was the first time they'd ever lost to Peru. The, uh, so anyway, Rochester gets off to a great start. They score very early in the game. Taylor Navarro with a beautiful shot. 
uh, to give the, the ladies ease a one nothing lead. You can tell that Taylor has played a lot of soccer before. She's just a sophomore, and she's just got those long strides, and she can cover a lot of ground really quickly, and I'm really excited. Then the, the last three goals were scored by Audrey Wagner on senior night to score three times. She had a, you know, she scores on a kind of a scramble in front of the goal after a corner kick. You know, everybody's you've seen those plays before where everybody's yeah. kind of kicking at the ball, and she finally was able to recover a loose ball and score. And so that made it 2-0. Uh, then she would score again on a PK to go up 3-0. Peru would get it back to 3-2 at halftime, but Audrey would score in the second half to go 4-2 on a beautiful pass by Bria Rensberger. Bria kind of did a little shot fake. It looked like she was going to shoot from kind of the top of the 18 and instead kind of slid a pass to Audrey. And Audrey was wide open and was able to b- beat the goalkeeper. So Rochester was a 4-2. In a lot of ways, the turning point might have been Navarra gets fouled in the box. They're a 4-2. Wagner had taken a penalty kick before, but apparently Navarra, Navarra took the penalty kick without consulting with Coach Rensberger. She misses the PK, and then instead of Wagner taking it, so they're still only a 4-2, and then Prug winds up tying the game. Again, this is a Rochester team that's basically playing with no subs. Mm-hmm. They've, got, they've got 12 girls on the team, so just a heartbreaking loss. And then once they get to PKs, one PK hits the crossbar, one goes over the goal, and they the third is saved by the Peru keeper. Hmm. So they go 0 for 3, and Peru goes 3 for 4, and that's it. Yeah, yeah, tough one there for the uh, Lady Z's. They've, uh, you know, just numbers have not been good for them this year. And, yeah. You know, you're trying to, you know, especially when you have a game like this to where it goes into mm-hmm. overtime and then PKs, you're just, I, I'm sure the legs were jelly. Yeah, 1-7 and 3 overall, 0 and 4 in the conference. I wanted to give a shout-out to the three seniors. Adeline Samuels just started playing soccer this year, and uh, Coach Rensberger loves the effort she gives. And, of course, Audrey Wagner. And I wanted to give a shout-out, too, to Skyla Mitchell. She has really improved so much. She just patrols that defensive back. I mean, she's kind of like a sweeper back there. And you could tell, I mean, again, she just plays her heart out back there and just didn't quite get the results. But um, they'll be back at it with a road game at Northwestern on Tuesday and then a home game with Tippecanoe Valley on Thursday. We should mention, yes, that is a home game with Valley. The game that was postponed from last, the year canceled from last week. Uh, they decided that was supposed to be a Rochester home game. Actually, Rochester and Valley were supposed to play twice. The first game got canceled because of Valley's lack of numbers. So as a way of, I guess, smoothing things over, the second game, which was supposed to be at Valley, has now been moved to Rochester. Okay. So again... Rochester at Northwestern Tuesday, home with Valley on Thursday. Um, yeah. Yep. Boys sure. soccer, they are 7 6 and 1 on the year. They're 1 and 4 in the conference. Uh, they lost to McConaughey 6 to 1 on Saturday in uh, <clears throat> Lagator. I mean, broiling hot weather. Mm-hmm. Uh, came, but came back and with two excellent games this past week. They beat Winnemac 7 0 at Winnemac on Tuesday. Four goals for Wyatt Davis in that game. And then a 5-0 win at Metro Rage last night at the new, I think it was called the New Journey Church in Wabash. And Wyatt Davis had a hat trick. So mm-hmm. Wyatt Davis has been on fire of late, and they have not allowed a goal the last two games either. Yeah. So I know they had been, ta- Coach uh, Eric Backus has been talking a lot about defense. He said, he said, we're just letting people just walk into our box and just, dri- you know, dribble the ball uh, into our box without really, really, competing with them and just we've got it we've got to be compete more in the box and give them give the opponents some trouble and it sounds like they've been doing that uh, the last two games yeah again the uh, soccer draw coming up this sunday so right um the boys you know have a, a little different looking sectional this year mm-hmm. so uh, an opportunity there but still some really good teams in there but uh not the Fort Wayne teams that they've been facing the last several years. Right. They have lost to Northwestern. They have lost to uh, Valley. They have lost to Peru, but they do have a win over Wabash. Uh, we will see. We don't I don't know a whole lot about Eastern soccer. We'll find out there. Uh, uh, but, uh, yeah, so. Uh, All right. How about the cross-country teams? How are they yeah. doing? Um Cross Country had the week off last week. They are headed to the New Haven Classic uh, tomorrow. That will be held at Huntington University. Start time is 9 a.m. I was told get there early. There's not a lot of parking. 
So get there early if you want to go there. Hmm. Uh, we hear that the Rochester girls will not have a complete team. Okay. Uh, we know they did have it one at McConaughey, but they won't have one tomorrow. New Haven Classic at Huntington University. Yes. Hmm. That's where the regional will also be. Okay. So there's a reason why they're going to that meet and not yeah. and not another meet tomorrow. And it's just odd that it's New Haven, but it's at Huntington. That's yeah. quite a ways away, but hey, it yeah. is. So. And then they are at the TRC meet next Saturday at Manchester. Okay. And then uh, boys tennis. Yeah, the Logan Sport match. Um, they were supposed to play Logan Sport on Monday. They started that match at Logan, and then the rains came. If you remember, it got rainy right around like six o'clock Monday night, yeah. five thirty, six o'clock. So they had to cancel that, and then they came back home for the home finale, the regular season finale against Northwestern on Wednesday, and they lost four to one. But the one point came from Tanner Reinerts on senior night. He won six one six four over uh, the wise kid, who, by the way, his cousin is. Allison Calloway from Rochester. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, so Rochester won. The, Rochester lost four to one, but Tanner won. He won six one six four, so he remains undefeated on the season. Uh, we Jesse Atkinson was there, and Mason Heidi. We were we were. Uh, he told Mason Heidi that nobody had ever gone undefeated since he had been the coach. So we believe this is me. What I don't. I'll have to talk to Joe McCarter on this because I know Joe has some history, I, but there have been very few kids go undefeated throughout the, the entire season at Rochester. I was actually talking to him earlier this week, and, and he kind of concurs. Mm -hmm. He doesn't think that uh, that there ever has been. Yeah. So I right, think it's official. But and ba back in the day when Joe was playing, they were in the NLC, so I'm right. sure they they're, played they're, really good competition. Right, right. Yeah. That was kind of his, yeah, yeah. his take on it, yeah. So, again, the sectional draw is 7 p.m. Monday, and the sectional starts Wednesday at Peru. Again, it's a five-team sectional, so they'll play one match on Wednesday, two matches on Thursday, and we believe the sectional final will be on Friday. Oh, wow. <laughs> so they'll be done by the end of next week, huh? Right. So we would assume that the sectional final will start like around like 4.30, so if you wanted to go from Peru and then catch the football game at Northfield, maybe you could get both done, but we'll see. Yep. All right, sounds good. We already talked about the girls' golf, of course, so uh, we'll take another quick break here, come back, and we'll talk some more sports with Val in just a moment. Stop on into Giretti's Place for breakfast, lunch, or to get your day started with a cup of coffee from our signature coffee bar. Located at 701 Main Street, Giretti's Place is the perfect spot for a bite to eat in downtown Rochester. Come on by Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. and on Saturday from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. To see a full menu, visit us at www.gerettysplace.com or call us at 574-223-7101. Thanks to the generous donors, the Fulton County Community Foundation has given over $19 million in grants and scholarships to our local communities. Grants received at the Community Foundation help families send their children to preschool, provide transportation, fund scholarships, local community events, and so much more. Call 574-223-2227 or visit NICF.org to see how your donation can benefit your community. Looking for a way to show off your students' art talents? Enter them in for Fulton County REMC's 2025 Cooperative Calendar of Student Art Contest. Any student from grades K-12 through can enter with an unlimited amount of submissions. Artwork can be submitted by parents, teachers, youth leaders, or other groups as a class project. Students do not have to be consumers of a rural electric cooperative. To learn more, visit www.fcremc.coop slash youth or call at 574-223-3156. Rochester Iron and Metal Incorporated is a full-service metal recycling and processing center. We pay cash for your scrap metal and work hard to make sure that every bit is recycled properly. Rochester Iron and Metal has been serving North Central Indiana for over 50 years, and we have dedicated ourselves to providing our customers with the best service, the best product, and the best prices anywhere. Stop on by at any of our 14 locations or visit us online at www.rochesteriron.com or call us at 574-223-4300 to learn more. Welcome back here talking sports with Val on a Friday afternoon, and you know, Tippecanoe Valley football, obviously, 
participating in the Indiana Northern State Conference for the first time, new conference and everything. And, so some what, and what a conference yeah, this is. This yeah. conference has been everything we thought it would be. After They got up to a little rough start in the non-conference part, like week one, week two, but they mm-hmm. it, this conference is everything we thought it would be. Yeah, yeah, they, it's, yeah. it's been really good. So one and one coming into the third conference game for uh, the Vikings and heading up to uh, La Paz to take on LaVille, and LaVille was, was ready for the uh, for the Vikings there. Right. I mean, LaVille led, you know, they led 21-10 to 10 at one point in the third quarter, um, it was actually 14-7 late in the second quarter. Gage Overby kicks a 37-yard field goal with no time left in the first half to get it to 14-10. And Valley's feeling pretty good. And then, boom, for early in the third quarter, Cody Allen with a pick six heads the other way for LaVille. They're up 21-10. And all of a sudden, the Vikings are in trouble. But one thing, you know, I talked with Coach Stephen Moriarty earlier this week. He said, he said, we just had to run it straight at LaVille. We couldn't, we couldn't get cute. We had to go straight at them. We had to make sure we blocked their linebackers. Yeah. Because their their linebacker, LaVille always has great linebackers, but they were able to finally get into that second level mm-hmm. and finally get those guys blocked. And Crady Moriarty was just spectacular. Seven carries, 178 yards, and two touchdowns. Hmm. What's, 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 what is that per carry? That's, what, 23 yards per carry it's or not something? not a bad like average, yeah. Or 25 yeah. yards a carry, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Including yeah. touchdown runs of 65 and 63 yards on the fourth quarter. They finished the game with 22 unanswered points, and they win 32-21. Wes Parker, seven carries for 132 yards. So just those two guys, 14 carries for 310 yards. Yeah. And uh, the road show continues for the Vikings as they head up to Jimtown. They head up to Bogo Township tonight. Yeah. Valley wow. has never, again, Valley beat Jimtown for the first time ever last year, beating him 35-14, but that was at Death Valley. Now they got to go to Jimtown where they've never won before. This is going to be an interesting game. This is a Jimtown team that started 0-2, but now they're 3-2. and They have picked it up big time. They beat Bremen 36-7 last week. And the thing about Jimtown is they're always great on special teams. They returned a kickoff for a touchdown last week, and they have blocked five punts already this year. Yeah. I mean, Jimtown, just the, the tradition that they have. I yeah. Mean, I played many games in Jimtown, mm-hmm. and it never went well for us, but... Yeah. It uh, it is a yeah. difficult place to play, and a lot of people were talking about what was this team going to look like because you know Coach Stoner leaves, he goes from Jimtown to Fairfield. Mm-hmm. They bring in Coach Vincent, and he's really done a nice job, especially after an zero and two start. Because you look at remember Jimtown starts the season every year with Concord and Northwood. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's really that is a tough non conference yeah. yeah. portion of the schedule, but they really bounce back nice. Um, they've got this, uh, the Johnson kid is a really good, uh, he's an explosive playmaker. Mm-hmm. And the Armstrong kid at quarterback is very solid as well. He's, he's a running quarterback. So yeah. we'll see how this Valley team does and how they match up on the off- on the on the line of scrimmage. Uh, I think it's going to be key, but this is a tough Jimtown team that plays good defense. I'm really curious to see how this game turns out. Remember, Knox and Jimtown are 2-0. and If Valley can beat Jimtown, they're back in the conference mix. Obviously, they'll need somebody to beat Knox. Yeah. For example, Jimtown. Yeah. That would be nice. But, I mean, if Valley can get this game, I think that could throw this conference race into chaos a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, it would be interesting to see. But, it's it's, like I said, it's not an easy place to go and win. Mm -hmm. But uh, we'll see what the Vikings can do there. It should be a good one there tonight up at Bogo. Mm -hmm. Um. Volleyball, they uh, they continue to uh, to do well in their first season in the INSC. Right, fourteen and nine overall. Now seven and zero in the INSC. It started with a very good performance at their at their home invite back on Saturday. They went three and one. They lost their first match to West Noble in two, and obviously that was kind of the big one of the day because West Noble is not only in their sectional, they are hosting the sectional. Mm-hmm. But then they come back. They beat a good Triton team in two. They beat a pretty good North Judson team in three that had been really coming on, and then they beat a really good Northfield team with Ellie Baker and Emily Miller and Cameron Kuhn. They beat them in three. So that was a nice, and that was a Northfield team that was coming off a sweep of Rochester. So that was a nice performance by Valley to go three and one. And then they get Knox at home. They, you know, Knox is really struggling. They're two and 19 on the season. Yeah, Valley beat no them in three. In the conference. 25, uh, 13, 25, 23, 25, 14. And then another nice win over Bremen last night, 25-19, or excuse me, 25-9, 25-17, 14-25, 25-13. So they win that one in four. They beat Knox twice now. They beat Bremen twice now, 7-0, and looking 
looking good in the conference race. Yeah, what, three more games left? All against teams they've already beaten. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, again, Aubrey Wagner has just been serving, has been setting great. McKaylee Costello, Emma Patrick, I mean, they've got this core experienced players and then bringing in, you know, a lot of young players. They, it's just a really athletic, solid team for Coach Hutton. Yeah. And they've really bounced back, you know, after that tough tournament at Plymouth earlier in the year. Uh, girls soccer, they are 0-10 in the year. They lost to Marion 5-2 to on Saturday. Uh, but they did score two goals, so that was the most, you know, they had only scored one all season in their first nine games, so that's a good sign. Uh, they host McConaughey on Tuesday, and then they have that game at Rochester on Thursday that we talked about. Okay. The boys soccer team, 3-8 and overall, 0-3 in the conference. Um, a loss to Lakeland Christian, 6-0 last night. Um, they are at LaVille tomorrow, and they are at South Bend, Washington next Saturday. So I think that the schedule will even up will ease up slightly as they get ready again. They're in the same sectional with Rochester. So again, you're talking about Eastern and those five TRC teams, Peru, the Conaqua, Wabash, Rochester, Northwestern. Um, cross country team, uh, no meets last week, and they're going to take another week off before they get ready for the INSC. Uh, boy, uh, yeah, so boys tennis, uh, they had their INSC tournament. We're waiting for results from that one. Uh, they have the Elkhart invite coming up on Saturday, coming up tomorrow. Okay. Uh, and then their sectional starts, as we mentioned, Wednesday at Warsaw. Girls golf, uh, Savannah Miller is playing in the regional. Uh, today, Friday, as we are taping this, so we'll, we will find that out and we will get the word out on how Savannah did, but a tremendous uh, performance at sectional shooting a 78 on a very tough Stonehenge course. I think she's going to be in the mix for one of those three spots. Obviously, she's going to have to break 80. And that's not easy to do at Noble Hawk Golf Links in Kendallville, but yeah, she will be there. All right, good luck. And just a freshman, yeah. so yeah, just right. a terrific future for her. All right. All right, let's take another quick break here. We'll come back and we'll talk some more sports with Val in just a moment. When it comes to legal needs, you want to make sure that you have the best team in your corner. Here at Perkins & Adley LLP, we strive to provide you with the highest quality legal and professional service. Whatever your needs are, from estate planning and trust to appeals and guardianships, Perkins & Adley has the knowledge and experience to serve you now and in the future. See a full list of services online at PerkinsAdley.com. Rochester Ford is your go-to for quality vehicles and automotive repairs. With our vast selection of vehicles to choose from, we're sure to put you behind the wheel of your dream car without compromising your bank account. And with every vehicle we sell, we offer a free lifetime oil change policy to be sure that your ride stays in tip-top shape even after you leave our lot. Come see us today at 119 East 4th Street, Rochester, or visit us online at rochesterfordonline.com. Fulton County REMC is proud to be offering great opportunities and programs for our youth in the upcoming year. These programs prioritize balancing fun with education, all in one unforgettable adventure. Right now, admissions are open for Camp Kilowatt for any youth currently in 6th grade, and for the youth tour for any current junior year high schooler. To learn more about these trips, visit fcremc.coop and check out our youth page, or call us at 574-223-3156. New Holland Rochester knows that farmers need equipment they can trust and rely on. That's why for over 125 years, New Holland has been innovating to develop the best and most sustainable products available for our customers. Check out our full fleet that includes our lineup of small compact tractors online at www.NewHollandRochester.com or stop in at one of our locations in Rochester or Logansport to see how we can serve you. Welcome back here, talking sports with Val for a Friday. And let's talk some uh, cast and comments. Val, we have a W in the books for the comments here as they get it done against the South Central Satellites. Yeah, uh, they won 48 to 14 to improve to 1 and 4 overall and 1 and 2 in the conference. And this was, this was a fun game to watch. The highlights. I was talking with Coach Chris Ulrich earlier this week, and he talked about, I asked him about his play calling. He goes, when we're blocking like that, the play calling is easy. Mm -hmm. He goes, actually, he goes actually when you 
It's when you're struggling, when the play calling's hard, you go deep into the deep into the back pages of the playbook. But this was he just kind of stuck with I, the same few plays. The, the blocking I, on that play was just beautiful. I might have been able to run through that. Yeah, one. beautiful. <laughs> Noah Hurd is number fifty three, and he. I was watching Noah this game. If you watch Noah, just follow him. You know, South Central, they came out in kind of a spread. Mm-hmm. That Clayton, Clayton Strauch is their quarterback, S-T-R-A-U-C-H. And he he, he, was a, he had a nice arm. There's a fourth down there. You don't yeah. really want to catch that on that play. Actually, yeah. it does you no good to intercept that, but. Little uh, brotherly love here. Yep, Gavin Molenkoff to Logan on a on a Logan Molenkoff on a uh, bootleg play, and then gets him a touchdown. Drew McGrew would kick the extra point, and Caston led fourteen to nothing at the end of one quarter. And again, the ball handling here is just so good. And Gavin Molenkoff finds Lucius Edson for his first career touchdown reception. And that was a good catch. That was kind of a shoestring catch. Yeah. That's not an easy thing to do and uh, keep in stride like that. 21 to nothing again. Strock would throw a touchdown pass here. They would get it to 21 8. It was they would tack on the two point conversion. But again, the misdirection. South Central follows the ball. Nice cut back by Molenkoff, and he drags the defender in for a touchdown. And that made it uh, 28 8. I don't think there's really a flag here. I just think Blair yeah. forgot to take that off. But uh. Again, Yarber, uh, Jabez Yarber was terrific in this game. So was Ashton Boyer. And they would cut back and get a touchdown here with the final minute of the half. You know, that's you know my new volleyball stat is wasted free balls. I think I have a new, I'm going to have a new football stat this year, which is touchdowns in the last minute of the, of the half. Because yeah. it seems like we have seen that a lot this year. And if you score in the touchdown, touchdown in the last minute of the half, you're usually pretty good. And this was the opening kickoff of the second half. Yarber, he is going to go untouched. I mean, that that, South, <clears throat> that poor South Central defender, he got corkscrewed into the ground. He never even laid a finger on Yarber. 83 yards for a touchdown. How about touchdowns at the end of the half followed by a uh, touchdown off the kickoff in the right. start of the second half? Yeah, so McGrew would kick the extra point, and they would go 41-8. to eight. And then this is a really nice run by Yarber. As this play gets strung out, I don't think South Central defended that play badly. But Yarber able to turn the corner and get just inside the pylon for a touchdown. McGrew would kick the extra point to make it 48-8, and we had a running clock for the rest of the way, and Castle would go on to win 48-14. to South Central got a touchdown on a 60-yard pass late against the Cast and backups. Yeah, not only a win, but a running clock at the end. And yeah. uh, they got another big one coming up as they head up to uh, Culver to take on the uh, Cavs tonight. So, what, uh, you know, this is a Culver team that, you know, got that big win against Attica to start the season, but they've been struggling coming off of a monster loss to the number one team in the state, Judson, yeah. last week. So, what are your thoughts on casting at Culver? I was talking with Coach uh, Ulrich, and the one guy that caught his eye watching film uh, was Ethan Binion. Yeah. He said, we got to stop him yeah. and we keep him from getting going, and then maybe we can stop the other guys. But he goes, he goes even though the, even though it looks like a – a, a shot, even though it's a shotgun and it's kind of, you almost call it like a shotgun wing teeth. He says that Culver, their first, their first uh, objective is to run the ball, not to mm. pass it. Yeah. So we'll see how that cast and run defense does. Because again, they were facing a South Central team that really had to pass it last week. So now, can can their run defense be really good? Can their linebackers? Because again, Yarber uh, is. You know, Yarber is a key to that defense as well. He usually leads them in tackles. So mm-hmm. we'll see if he gets if he gets involved a lot. That means that the the defensive line is forcing the Culver offensive line to work extra hard. Yeah, yeah. That's going to be a fun matchup when you talk about like Drake Zorich against that cast and defensive front. You know, against Hurd and those guys. So yeah, uh, that is going to be a key for the cast and uh, defense and for the uh, for the offense is just going to keep up more of the same. Um, because, you know, with Yarber, Molenkoff, and Boyer, you've got three weapons. Yeah. you you got to keep getting that kind of blocking that yeah. you had in that game against South yeah. Central. If you do that, then those three can, can run wild like yeah. they did. So yeah. 
That'll be a good one coming up uh, next here from Cavalier Field. Should be a, a fun one up there, the Comets and the Cavaliers. Caston Volleyball, you know, just a, a young team. They're just trying to find their way. They're still struggling a little bit to uh, get Ws. Yeah, 6-19 and 19 overall, 1-4 and four in the conference. They lost to North Miami earlier in the week in conference play, losing 25-18, 25-10. 25-14, but they bounced back with a nice win over West Central last night, 25-23, 25-22, 25-21. And Aiden has really been coming on. She had 10 kills last night, and Natalie Warner had 9. And then you get 12 assists from McKenna Middleton and 5 from Maddie Douglas. And Maddie does a little bit of everything, you know. She's maybe the team's best server as well. Yeah. Uh, so and then you get you know, Carly Summers in the back row. So this is a team that's, uh, you know, a nice win, and let's see... Uh, again, to beat a sectional opponent in West Central, that's a really good sign. Uh, let's see if they can use that as uh, some momentum. But, again, they've got a tough uh, Wabash team coming to town on Monday. So Wabash Ooh. will be at Caston on Monday and at Rochester on Tuesday. Wow. And then... Uh, and Stay then, overnight there, huh? Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> and then Caston hosts North Judson on Tuesday. This is a Judson team that's pretty solid. Yeah. Uh, you know, that, that took a set off Pioneer for what that's worth the other night. And then Caston hosts a struggling Knox team on Thursday uh, before hosting their own Caston tournament next Saturday. Yeah. Soccer team's finding a, little, a couple W's. They were 0-7. Now they're 3-7. Yeah. Uh, they beat Culver 8-1 on Monday and then la on Wednesday 11-2 over Oregon Davis. And congratulations to Maddie Sprow, a senior, scored her first career goal. Did she? Awesome. Yeah, yeah. that was awesome. Yeah. And uh, both of those are conference wins. Yeah, both of them are conference yeah. wins. So they're now two and one in the conference. Yeah. Uh, of course, the one loss was to Argus back yeah. in August. Yeah. Uh, but again, Caston they're at or, excuse, yeah Caston at Laville on Tuesday, and then they host Winnemac on Thursday. I mean, they'll have a chance to win both of those games as well. Yeah. Yeah. Cross country, the girls team and boys team both went to the New Prairie Invite on Saturday. The girls were 11th, and the boys were 21st. Uh, the freshman, Maggie Rogers, went, ran 2330 to lead the girls. Kane Finke ran 1930 to lead the cast and boys. Reed Summers right behind him at 1941. Yeah. Uh, cast and heads to the Culver Academy invite tomorrow morning, 8.45 a.m. start. The 40th year of the Culver Academy invite. Yeah, that like, is a monster race, too. There yeah. are tons of schools tons of schools from not all, all the, over from all over the midwest yeah, yeah. there's schools from illinois there's schools from ohio schools from michigan yeah it's really a, it's just a huge event and it's really a, a cool a cool setting if you've never been to culver academy for a cross-country race yeah. uh the girls golf team finished 11th out of 11 teams at the twin lakes sectional they shot a 530 uh shaley strasser shot 124 Kylie Reidenbach, 134, and Salma Ramirez, 135, Alyssa Smith, 137, and Angela uh, McVicker shot a 140. So, again, um, Coach Phelps, you know, again, still the program in the early stages, but, again, I uh, wanted to give a shout-out to Shaley Strasser, uh, you know, for, for leading the team uh, with a 124. Yeah. All right, let's move down the road a little ways to uh, Royal Center. Let's talk some Pioneer uh, Panthers as the football team hosting North Miami. You know, this North Miami team having a really good year and uh, their first year in the uh, right. Hoosier North. Coming off a 46 to nothing loss to North Judson the other day. So what kind of – where was North Miami going to be in terms of their confidence? Well, they were, they were ready to play this game. They were ready to go. Yeah, we, we knew this was going to be a, a tough one for uh, for both teams here coming into it. and I guess the the thing, uh, you know, for Pioneer coming right out of the gate, and, uh, not a bad run back uh, off of the kickoff. That's McFatridge, the freshman, right? I believe, number 23. And I, I don't know. I kind of asked uh, Carrie because she was there, you know, what happened here because uh, the – first play of scrimmage they get a touchdown they're all set up for the extra point and turn out that uh no touchdown so i i don't know did you hear anything about that i did not hear anything i, about I don't that. know exactly what but didn't really affect them because the next play they run for another touchdown so yep that was noah van meter going up the middle so pioneer led seven to nothing as mcfatridge the freshman kicked the extra point they've got a pretty good freshman kicker in mcfatridge philip mcfatridge kind of uh 
one of the one thing that Carrie said, kind of a strange night. There was just a lot of flags and, and kind of mm-hmm. some confusion at times as mm-hmm. to uh, what the calls were. So I'm not sure uh, exactly what happened with all that, but North Miami. Yeah, this was Ryan Meredith. They run the toss sweep to the left, and Mc- Meredith would take it 35 yards for a touchdown. <clears throat> Fourth and 10, not only get the uh, first down, but the touchdown as well. Yeah, so that would tie the game at 7. And there's a fumble, and North Miami would recover at their own 33-yard line. And this is just a nifty play. Uh, Hoover's in the shotgun snap. He'll hand the ball off to Meredith, and then Meredith will throw a pass. Yeah. And Avery, Avery Peel is open behind the defense for a touchdown. Yeah. On the halfback option. So North Miami would kick the extra point, and they would go up 14-7. to uh, Jake Riley is their kicker. We've seen, seen Jake on the... Yeah, Basketball know that, know that name? Yep. But as it turned out, they would not score again in this game. Boy, Fletcher Smith has been playing great on this defense. Eli Guffey has been tremendous. They didn't get quite the, the penetration into the backfield as they have in previous games, but um, again, really hung tough. And North Miami led 14 to 7 at halftime. You know, Mike Rands continues yeah. to uh, just do everything that uh, Coach Barry needs him to do. Uh, yeah, again, you fake the midline, and uh, Rands would take that in for a touchdown. The extra point attempt was no good, so North Miami still led 14 13. Here, another nice uh, punt return by Rands. And this is first and goal from the six. Again, similar to the previous touchdown, as he would take it in from the six for a touchdown. McFatridge would run the two-point conversion in. So Pioneer led 21-14. to 14. And again, this was just a defensive battle. Again, I, I know... Hartley Hoover, a big-time threat for North Miami, is both a thrower and a runner. And that would get the big uh, turnover there, and Pioneer would hang on to win 21-14. to So Pioneer now 4-1 and overall, 3-0 in the Hoosier North. Yeah, tied, got, with, tied with North Judson and Triton for first place. And a uh, trip to Union Mills. I don't know when the last time that they have went to Union Mills. I think you said the last time they played them was 91. Yeah, was that at Union Mills at the time, or was I'd that? I'd have to double check on yeah. that one. Not a not a real common opponent uh, in the past. Of course, it's uh-huh. going to be uh, starting this year uh, with a new conference. Yeah. But uh, you know, we just talked about South Central uh, losing to Caston. Of course, the week before Pioneer <laughs> kind of ran it up against Caston, so that's going to be uh, yeah a tough one for the satellites. For yeah, sure. I mean South Central had trouble stopping Caston's running game. If they had trouble stopping Caston's running game. Yeah. How are they going to be able to stop Pioneer's running game? Yeah, uh, That's going to be something that's going to be a big concern. But again, South Central, they're going to c- come out in a spread. So we'll see if if Pioneer's defensive backs get tested. You can't give up the big play against South Central. South Central's only chance to win this game is through big plays in the passing game, I yeah. think. I would yeah. think. Well, and, you know, Pioneer trying to keep that mark, uh, you know, the, the sheet clean for the conference. But, boy, you still got that uh, big one looming at the end of the year with uh, Judson. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be a, a monster game, of mm-hmm. course. So uh, volleyball continues to uh, to do well. Of course, you know they went to Leo last week, one and three, not the best result, but that's a that's a monster tournament up there at Leo. Right. I mean, you lose to they lost to Daleville in two sets. Daleville is a really good team mm-hmm. every year. They beat New Haven in two, then lost to Leo in two, and then lost to Fort Wayne Snyder in two. Yeah, nothing, nothing to be ashamed of there. Right, but then they come back in conference play. They traveled to North Judson on Monday night, and North Judson did take a set off them, but Pioneer kind of gathered themselves and won 25-17, 14-25, 25-18, 25-17. So a nice road win. That got them to 5-0 in the conference. And then they beat Winnemac last night at um, 25-15, 25-13, 25-10. Yeah. So that got them to 6-0. So again, 16-10 and overall, 6-0 in the conference. But maybe the biggest week of the conference season is coming up 
at Triton Tuesday, home with North Miami on Thursday. Yeah, two two very good teams that uh, could be a, a possible stumbling block. Right. I mean, when you do, when you talk about Maya Davis, and again, she's such a unique player for Triton because of her left-handed swing. Mm-hmm. And then you know uh, Avery Veers has really been coming along, and then North Miami. We've talked about Grace Sailors. She is as good a player as there is in the conference. I mean, I, I'm hugely impressed by her. Mm-hmm. So we'll see how they, they handle her. But they've got a big week ahead of them. Yeah. But Le- Layla DeMond has been playing out of this world. I think she had 20 kills against Judson. Yeah. I mean, she has been just on fire of late. Yeah. Well, we, we kind of saw that in that first matchup here at Rochester. Yeah. I mean, you could see the potential was there for sure. Yeah. So really, uh, you know, and, and very young, too, just a freshman. Yeah. So that's... It's going to be fun to watch. Yeah. And, again, we're kind of keeping an eye on that because at some point Pioneer and Tri-County yeah. are going to have to meet in that sectional. Tri-County ranked number three in the state, <laughs> and Tri-County with a great win over Faith Christian the other night who was ranked number, who was ranked number six. Wow. I mean, so I'm really excited to see how Pioneer might. But, I mean, in terms of strength of schedule, I would imagine Pioneer's done everything they can to prepare themselves for a match like that. Yeah, yeah. Cross country wise for the Panthers. Yeah, the girls finished twelfth at the New Prairie Invite. Kylie Jamerson twenty four fifteen, Avery Hasselby twenty four sixteen. So those two have been attached to the hip basically yeah. all year, and no different this time. Boys finished eleventh. Leighton Dot ran a sixteen fifty seven, third place overall in the Class A race at at uh, New Prairie. Wow. So Leighton just another spectacular day. Uh, Dane Bodich also broke eighteen minutes, but uh, again. A really good sign, really good competition for uh, Leighton as he, you know, again, as because again I talked with Leighton earlier this year. I mean, it's all, it's all about how do I get ready for state mm-hmm. and how do I for, to make it back to state and then do well at state. Yeah, of course they're going to be at the academy tomorrow as well. Yep, and then they go to Peru for the Peru Tiger invite on Tuesday, and of course the Hoosier North meet at Winnemac Town Park is next Saturday. Yeah, and we've. You know, traditionally seen some pretty good times coming out of that. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, yeah, you'll have to go under 17. You probably might even have to go under 16.30 to win that one. Yeah. Uh, girls golf, we mentioned Mia McKay going. The, as a team, Pioneer shot a 4.45 and finished ninth out of 11 teams. We talked about Mia McKay's 86, Brenner McLean 116, Kendra Hansen 120, shot a 120, Emma Juby a 123, and uh, Malia Johnson a 132. So uh, for Mia to get out of the regional, what's she going to have to do? Uh, something in the 70s. Yeah. I mean, now having said that, the weather forecast isn't that great for tomorrow. If mm-hmm. it's windy, well, then maybe maybe something in the low 80s, yeah. low to mid 80s. But that's obviously going to be equivalent to the shooting in the 70s. Right. Because everybody else is going to shoot. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. I mean, the we'll see how much the wind is a factor. I mean, and if it... it it sounds like the course might be softened up a little bit by rain, but we'll see how much the wind is a factor. Because yeah. we were there for the boys regional last year, and the wind had a huge impact. So, mm-hmm. yeah. All right. Anything else Pioneer-wise before we go? Uh, I think that's all I have. Okay. Let's take another quick break. We'll be back here talk some more sports with Val in just a moment. Spray foam is not only going to seal up the structure, but it's doing that insulation at the same time. So with a seamless application with the spray foam, you get all of that. You get your air barrier, you get your insulation, and obviously with with one of the products, you get a vapor barrier as well. Hi, I'm Ashley Samsel with the Insulation Guys. And I'm Kyle Hoover. Let us be your solution to modern energy efficiency. Pace Setters Real Estate knows that buying and selling properties can be a tough and complicated task. That's why we are here to provide you with our full service process where we walk with you every step of the way. Whether you're buying or selling and your listing is commercial, residential, or investment, our agents are able to show any type of real estate that is active on the market. Visit us online at www.pacesettersre.net or call now at 574-223-5000. Steve Moore Agency is now offering an app to make viewing your policies, make payments, and file claims so much easier and convenient. You can download Steve Moore's Insurance Agent app from the Google Play Store or the App Store. Just search up Insurance Agent and look for the blue app with the large eye. 
If you want to know more about our services, you can call us at 574-223-3010 or visit us online at stevemoreagency.com. Harley-Davidson of Kokomo is your destination for everything Harley. We carry a complete line of motorcycles, including the new 2024 models. We also offer a full parts department and a service department specializing in customizing, high performance, and routine maintenance. And our motor clothes department carries the latest to genuine Harley-Davidson casual and riding apparel to keep you styling no matter where the road takes you. Call us today at 765-864-9999 or visit us online at hdkokomo.com. Welcome back here, talking sports with Val as we wrap things up here for week six of the football season. Still a lot to talk about here in this final segment. Let's talk some uh, Argus Dragons, Val. Let's start off with the girls' soccer team. Yeah, they are 4-6-1 and one overall, 3-1 and one in the Hoosier North. They stepped outside the conference and traveled to Northridge on uh, Saturday and lost 7 to nothing. Hmm. Uh, did not get a shot on goal, but again, that's one of those games that will help you get ready for the postseason. And the schedule does not get a whole lot easier this week. They are at Culver Academy on Tuesday, and they host Bethany Christian uh, next Saturday. Yeah, two former conference yeah. opponents for them and uh, two big rivalries. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. The Argus boys soccer team, they are 7-3-1 and one overall. They are a 5-0 oh in the conference. Uh, we had the Vanderweel Bowl last Saturday. Yeah, got some highlights Eugene for you. Eugene Snyder Field. Yeah. And this one was a really good game without anybody named Van. Even if you didn't weren't interested in anybody named Vanderweel, this was just a good soccer game. Yeah, and, and you know the the funny thing. I guess you shouldn't. Uh, mm-hmm. This shouldn't surprise anybody, but the team in white, which is actually Northwestern mm-hmm. in this case, and we'll get here is a uh, nice slip pass and Stoltz to Keegan Stanley for a goal. I couldn't tell if that was a nutmeg or not. It might have went between the, the goal post and the keeper, but mm-hmm. uh, a great pass from Stoltz. But this right here, doesn't that look like everything that you've always seen Argus do? Yeah. I mean, it's just crazy how familiar <laughs> both of these teams played. Yeah. And I mean, again, I not that I'm surprised. I'm, I'm I'm impressed, but not surprised how well coached Northwestern is. Yeah, they are just really, really solid. Yeah, you know, this was one of those times where the the keeper came out, yeah, maybe a little hesitant, and uh, you know they're able to get past. Yeah, yeah they were able to slide goal. that one. And Corbin Rex made a great sliding effort, but Northwestern scored. And then this goal was just a crazy play. Argus basically steals steals a goal kick. Uh, that was Pets, and then he. He fed, uh, they, and then, anyway, they get the goal to tie the game at two. But then this was the game winner by Ty Kidwell. He's just a sophomore. He's a really good player for Northwestern. He gets, he gets kind of to the back post. Was able to score, and Northwestern able to pull out a three to two win. But in a lot of ways, the special part was what happened after the game, and all the players on both teams uh, gathered together for a team picture. And again, everybody was wearing uh, armbands, blue armbands, um, for colon cancer awareness. Again, not only has Todd Vanderweel fought through this, but Matt Polk, who's an assistant coach at Northwestern, he is he's he's had his own colon cancer battle. Oh, gosh. And again, that's mm-hmm. again kind of why. In fact, it's kind of why they hired Spencer because Matt Matt Polk couldn't you know battle cancer the way he wanted and help the team out as a coach. So um, everybody was thinking of him as well, and and Coach Polk and Todd Vanderweel have kind of developed this kind of friendship through their own respective battles. Yeah. Uh, Coach Polk was diagnosed in November, which was about a couple months after Todd was. So it was definitely, um, you know, th- that was what was so special about it, you know. Yeah. But it was funny talking with Lexi Vanderweel, and she was like, you know, again, because she's, I mean, she's wearing her Argus shirt, and she's sitting next to her dad, but she's hearing things out of her left ear coming from the other <laughs> bench, and it's like, man. What, <laughs> it sounds familiar. I, sounds familiar, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's crazy, you know. I, I lost my dad to colon cancer 24 years ago, and and it's it's just you know. So I I appreciate you know Todd is a good friend and appreciate what he's gone through and mm-hmm. and uh, you know we obviously wish him and and the Northwestern coach the best as they they fight this just a terrible disease. And, yeah. Um, you know, Spencer uh, has definitely obviously this is just kind of maybe a one year thing, maybe not, but. 
if if he doesn't continue with Northwestern, he has solidified his he, uh, place as a head coach somewhere. You need to snap him up pretty quick. <laughs> if mean, you want to have a good soccer program, yeah. he's your man. Right. Because, I mean, again, all 11 guys are connected. Yeah. And that's what you look for in a good soccer team. And yeah. And that's, all 11 guys are connected and tied together. Yeah. And, I mean, he does, you know, in terms of the – Individual player development part, he does that really well. Mm-hmm. And in terms of playing together as a team, he does that really well too. Yeah, and, and that's, you know, like I said, that's why it looked so familiar because that's the way that Todd coaches. Yeah. And, and, you know, Argus has always been the team that uses not only the length of the field but the width of the field yeah. as well. And and that was very familiar watching that game. So, yeah, uh, just, a, just a great day, yeah. really, up in Argus. And yeah. Now, having said that, if you think – if you think battling through cancer and beating cancer has mellowed Todd Vanderweel, no, it is not. It is yeah. not. He yeah. is he is as intense a competitor as ever. He he really lit into his team. I mean, he he afterwards, but I mean, he he he's all he's only saying that because he knows what kind of what they're capable of. Yeah. And you know, I mean, Angelo McMillan is a freshman keeper who's really coming on. You know, Corbin Rex and is doing great uh, in the back. He impressed me, Ben Zom. Is back healthy. He's he's been impressive of late. Mm-hmm. Um, again, this team is again they're they're having a good year uh, at seven three and one overall and five and zero oh in the conference. They host Oregon Davis on Monday. They're at Culver Academy on Thursday, and then Bethany Christian, the defending state champ, comes to town. Mm-hmm. Comes to Eugene Snyder Field next Saturday as part of a boys girls doubleheader. The boys game will go first, then the girls game. That'll be really interesting to see. Kind of a barometer to see. Uh, Argus, especially that right before sectional. Yep. All right, uh, volleyball. What's going on with the uh, Lady Dragons? Hey, they're up to three wins on the year, three and twenty overall. But remember, they only won one match all of last year. So they already won yeah. three. Good. They went to the Tri Central invite. They went one and two, but they did beat Tri Central in three on their home court before losing to Morristown in two and to Culver in two. Uh, the Morgan Township match was canceled for Monday night. I don't know why. Still haven't heard why. And then a nice win over South Bend Career Academy last night, 25-20, 25-18, 25-12. Good, yeah. So a really nice win. They swept them. Uh, Argus continue, moves back into conference play on Tuesday night when they had to Winnemac, and then they had to Bethany Christian for a match next Friday. Yeah, it should be a competitive conference matchup between Winnemac and Argus. Yeah. Yeah, so that'll be, that'll be interesting to see how that so comes Coach out. Tin, good congrats to Coach Tinsman and, and the effort that they're putting in there. Yeah. Uh, let's move down Highway 10 and talk a little Culver Cavaliers. Uh, we mentioned the fact that uh, not so good of a result last week against Jets, and uh, not many teams have had a good result right. against Jets in the last four or five years, honestly. Right. They're 1-4 and four overall. They're 0-3 in conference play following a 70 to nothing loss last week to North Jets, and that was North Jets' third straight shutout on defense. I was talking with Coach Austin Faust earlier in the week, and I asked him, I said, what was the, what was the disappointing aspect of that game? And he just said, the tackling. Hmm. He said, we really get off to a good start. We get off to a pretty decent drive. We got to punt it away, but they, they take over a terrible field position. It's third and ten from inside their own 20, and he's thinking, well, if we can get them to punt here, at least we can you know, keep the game sort of close. They On a fullback dive, essentially, you go 80 yards for a touchdown, and all hmm. of a sudden it was just like the wheels fell off at that point. It was yeah. 28 to nothing. In a heartbeat, and it was fifty-four to nothing by halftime. Jetson wound up winning seventy to nothing. Uh, so we talked a little bit less than a hundred yards offense. We talked a little bit about you know Caston going to Culver. So let's look at it from Culver's perspective. What do the Cavaliers have to do? Yeah. To try, you know, you got Caston coming in off of a win. You're mm-hmm. coming in off of a, uh, a tough loss. What does the Cavaliers have to do to try and get this win? Well, Coach Austin Faust talked about discipline on defense. You cannot, if you get caught ball watching, you're in deep trouble because they're going to run misdirection on you all day and you'll be chasing them yeah. the, whole, the whole night. So follow your keys. Do not get caught out of position. If they Again, because, again, Caston's offense is so unique. It's that single wing where it's almost like they're putting in a, a guard uh, right behind the center and then the quarterback's right behind the guard. So follow your keys. Don't get caught, uh, uh, you know, where, where, you're dis, where, you're, where you lack discipline because then they'll run misdirection. You know, Mollenkoff or Yarber or Boyer will run uh, to that opposite side. So that's going to be one of the keys. And then offensively, they've got to find a way to run the ball against Caston's 4-4 defense. 
Uh, so offensive line play is going to be big mm-hmm. uh, for Culver in this game because I think they got to possess the ball. Yeah, and and you stop the cast and run game, and, and they can throw it a little bit too. Yeah, we saw that in that South Central game, right? With uh, yeah, I mean, uh, right, because all those guys can seemingly catch the ball as well as run with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the Mollenkopf brothers, that, the Mollenkopf that brothers, yeah. yeah. So so again and again, but you know, I mean. Caleb McEwen is one of the better safeties in the Hoosier North, so yeah. uh, that could be a, you know, I mean, again, he, he's got to read his keys too and help out in, in case Kasten does drop back to pass. Yeah, a volleyball team, you know, you, you talked about it. They went down to Tri Central and uh, win that uh, invite again, back to back. Yep, second straight year they beat uh, Morristown in two, they beat Tri Central in two, and then they beat Argus in two. Yeah, to win that tournament, so that was a round robin. Then they go uh, beat North White. Uh, that was on Monday night. They had to bounce back. Monday night, play a pretty solid North White team. Yeah. Lost the first set, came back to win in four, 23-25, 25-22, 25-15, 25-13. And then a win over Lakeland Christian, 25-10, 25-13, 25-22. Boy, this team is red hot now, up to 19-5 and five on the year and 5-3 and three in the conference. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they go to Elkhart Christian on Tuesday, and then they host Lavelle on Wednesday. Uh, they all lost a hard-fought match at home to Elkhart Christian last year, so they would like to maybe get some revenge uh, when they travel there on Tuesday. And then a very winnable match against LaVille on Wednesday. Yeah. Unfortunately, out of the conference picture with three losses, right? Right. I yeah. mean, Pioneer's still undefeated. Yeah. So even if they have a completely disastrous week and lose both of their matches to North Miami and Triton, obviously that's only two. Yeah. 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 Um, the uh, the soccer team, boy, that was a tough one. They're going and, and losing two zero to uh, Laville. Right. I mean, for it's them to be shut out, a yeah. Sectional opponent. For them to shut get shut out, but boy, that speaks well to Laville's defense. Uh, yeah. Yeah. To, to to shut down. Just to shut down Ava McCune is mm, yeah. uh, hard enough. So did I did I read this right? I saw that she was third in the country. Yeah, we need we need to confirm that. But yeah, I, did I read that though. Yeah, 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 yeah. She has been, yeah, she's been incredible. So. Again, they're ten and two overall. They're two and one in the conference with that one loss to Argus. But again, both of their losses to sectional opponents, Argus and Laville. Yeah. So that's something to keep an eye on as we take a look at the draw coming up on yeah. Sunday. Yeah, the draw's gonna be big for them. Right. Culver will be at Taylor tomorrow. Uh, they will host Marquette Catholic on Monday, and they will host North White on Thursday. So yeah. you'd have a chance to pick up three more wins there. Yeah. The boys' soccer team, they are 0-6 overall, 0-4 in conference. They lost to Caston 8-1 and lost to LaVille 3 to nothing. Uh, they also had to Taylor as part of a boys-girls doubleheader. And then they had to Blackator on Tuesday to take on Rochester. So a couple of road games coming up. Okay. All right. Uh, let's talk a little Winnemac here. Yeah, Winnemac now, the football team now 2-2 two two overall. They're 1-2 and two in conference play. They lost to Triton 28 to nothing at uh, Roundabush Field on Friday. Again, Triton had a big quick, a big uh, pick six early. Dante Workman with the interception returned for a touchdown. It just seemed like Winnemac was trying to scramble to get back in the game. And again, the problem with Winnemac is they don't really have an explosive playmaker on offense. They don't have a guy who's going to get you 70, 80 yards. They've got to, they've got to get it one first down at a time. Yeah. And again, that, and facing a Triton team that's got a lot of speed. Again, I thought Winnemac played pretty solid defensively in that game, but again, Triton able to get a twenty-eight to nothing win. Uh, Winnemac will travel to North Miami tonight. Warriors versus Warriors. Again, how will that North Miami team bounce back after a tough loss to Pioneer? Yeah. Again, Winnemac they're going to have to defend that option. You know, they got to stop Hoover, but they also got to stop Meredith, and they also got to stop. They also got to respect the midline with that Cody Juan up the middle. That's another one of those. When was the last time Winnemac played at North Miami? 1980s, yeah. I think. Yeah, that's yeah. definitely been a while. Obviously, it's going to be a lot more frequent now, but uh, that'd be an interesting one. So Winnemac Warriors at the North Miami Warriors. Yeah. So and by the I way, put my money on the Warriors for this yes, one. Yes, <laughs> yeah. And by the way, if you know where that website, NorthMiamiFootball.com, went, it's, it's vanished from the Internet. Really? And it was my it was one of my go to research places. Yeah. So I would I would you know, stuff like when did Winnemac last play North Miami and when did Pioneer last play South Central. I would have been able to answer those questions, but it has vanished from the internet and I don't huh. know what happened. I don't know if you have to pay 
pay money to. Keep. It's a dark web. It is a yeah. <laughs> it is it is vanished from the web. So I don't know. Huh. So if you can find that website or just find the information and send, <laughs> I would love to have it because it is just a gold mine of stuff. I mean, I could look up Rochester games from the nineteen thirties or. 40s. So it's your ET or, parole or for 50. football knowledge. It is my ET. Yeah, it's my. <laughs> yeah, you think you think it's my memory? No, it's not. It's <laughs> it's the web, and then I write it down. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. So I would like to know that because there's a lot. It's just a gold mine of information. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Uh, volleyball. Winnemac is three and nineteen overall. They are one and five in conference play. They went to that Valley tournament on Saturday. They went 0-4, losing to Northfield in two, Churubusco in two. We know how good Churubusco is. Yeah. Lost to Carroll of Flora in two and lost to North Judson in two. And then came back and Monday night lost to Tri Township team that had lost only one. They had won only one match all year, but they were able to get by Winnemac. 26-24, 25-20, 15-25, 25-16. And then Winnemac lost to Triton at home 25-19, 25-16, 25-13. We have talked about how good Triton is. And then a loss to Pioneer last night, 25-15, 25-13, 25-10. All right. Uh, they, go, they host Argus on Tuesday. We talked about that match. Then they travel to Rochester on Thursday. We talked about that match. Both of the, I mean, again, those should be matches that Winnemac can compete in. Yeah. And then they're at the Attica Invite next Saturday. Okay. And then soccer. Uh, boys soccer. Uh, Winnemac lost to Rochester 7 to nothing. On Tuesday night, but followed, but maybe their best win of the season last night, beating Laville two to one. Sean Stark, the sophomore, scored both goals. Yeah, that's a big win. Yeah, yeah, a really good win. Yeah, for Coach uh, Badayo and his team. Yeah. So yeah, and again, Stark just a sophomore, so really bright future there. Uh, they are hosting Westville on Monday and at Caston on Thursday. All right. And then the cross country team. Girls finished fifth at the New Prairie Invite. Caden Suver with a twenty one fifty was the front runner. Boys finished eighth. Logan Friedel, seventeen twenty, just having a great year. Not quite his PR uh, that he had uh, at uh, the McConaughey Invite, but a really good run again for Logan. And again, that's a really solid team. They are at the Culver Academy Invite tomorrow. Nobody usually PRs at New Prairie, do they? No, once you get through the the hill. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, I mean it's it's a tough course to to get a, a personal best time at. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, but again, it's again that the New Prairie invite is more important for Winnemac than any of our other teams, only because that's where their regional is. Yeah, yeah. Girls golf, the uh, again, yeah, call at Culver Academy invite tomorrow, and then host the conference race next Saturday. Okay. The Winnemac girls golf team shot a four forty four and finished eighth out of eleven teams at the Twin Lakes sectional. Uh, Hunter Hines was the uh, Low score for uh, Winnemac with a 106. Sierra Ashel, a 107. Mershai Lamer shot a 111. Uh, Kaylin O'Connor shot a 120. And Emily Weaver shot a 134. So, unfortunately, nobody advanced. advanced but, uh, again, uh, Coach Shell does a great job there. And, again, this was a really young team. Uh, again, most of those girls will be back next year. All right. All right, that's going to do it here for tonight. We've got uh, lots of football action coming up. We've got Pioneer at South Central. We've got Winnemac at North Miami. We've got, of course, Caston at uh, Culver. Mm -hmm. uh, who am I missing there? Rochester, of course, going to be hosting Peru. Now, Tippecanoe New Valley on the road at Jimtown. Yeah, and we've got a bunch of interesting games. If you're a Valley fan, boy, you're going to watch that Garrett West Noble game tonight. Both teams undefeated and both teams in Valley sectional. And by the way, West Noble travels to Lakeland next week, and Lakeland's 4-1. and one. Yeah. Again, West Noble up to number 5 in the polls this week. They are playing fantastic football on both sides of the ball. This might be the best defensive team they've had. That Valley sectional is looking really tough. Again. Right. You just think that you get out of uh, Marion sectional, then you get out of Chittard sectional, and no, you're yeah. in West Noble and you're yeah. it. And so. Another game we're going to be keeping an eye on tonight, Heritage at Tipton. Both teams are 4-1. and one. Tipton, of course, in Rochester sectional. Yeah. And, um, you know, North uh, North Judson at Triton tonight. Yeah, that's a big one in number the conference. one, Number one and number six in Class 1A. Big, battling. big one. And that's at the trench? It's at the, yeah, it's at Triton. Yeah. So, so uh, and again, I would just say if you're a soccer fan on Sunday, we will get the brackets on X and on Instagram as soon as we possibly can. Yeah, yeah. Again, just follow me at uh, Val T Sports and... I think Val T Sports R, R, Val T Sports RTC on Instagram. All right. Oh yeah, Instagram. Uh, new, new stuff there. Oh yeah. So, yeah. 
All right, that's going to wrap it up here for us tonight. Rochester and Peru coming up next here on RTC TV 4 and uh, Channel 4 in Rochester. Again, shout out to my daughter. Happy birthday, McKenna. And we'll be seeing you soon. And uh, we'll see you next week. Talk some more sports.